Hey, so before this video starts, I just want to say that it would mean a lot to me if you could comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell even, uh, follow my Twitter if you want. Uh, this video is a sequel to a pre-existing video, the first Bakuya MMO video where I go through Kanto, although I'm sure you'll enjoy this regardless of if you watch that or not. Granted, if you like it, once again, like, subscribe, and all that, leave a comment telling me if you hated it or not, you know? Feedback is always nice. Also, I'm gonna be throwing in some clips from the last video just to explain a few rules and stuff for the people who haven't seen it, or to give a refresher for those who have. First things first, I played the game through Poke MMO, which is unofficial but technically legal online MMO of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, all the way up until Black and White. The MMO is very much meant for Pokemon veterans, with harder trainers and gym leaders, but also adds a lot of extra features such as character customization, following Pokemon, a friends feature, and more. Though as you can tell by the title of this video, I wanted to go in order, and so I started with the Kanto region, being Fire Red and Leaf Green. Though due to the general way that the MMO is presented, it feels way more like a personal journey rather than just playing through Red's journey, and so I'm going to present this video like it's more of my own journey rather than Red, so I'm going to leave things out like Team Rocket or the Rival Blue. Though I am going to touch on those things once I get into the review portion of the video. And now, without any further ado, let's get into Hoenn. Our journey starts with me in a moving van. As said in the last video, I'm a very pale white girl, so my parents are Unovans who moved to Kanto and now Hoenn. After beating Champion Lance, I fought against many trainers from many regions to hone my skills. After that, I'd also dabbled a bit in catching and selling Pokemon. I used a Pidgey, which later evolved into a Pidgeotto to make catching them without fainting easier. I get out of the van, talk to my mom, and see Professor Birch doing what he does best, get chased by canines in circles. Birch tells me to get a Pokemon from his bag so that he doesn't die, and so, I look at my options. I decide to go with Torchic and name it Hotshot. I have Hotshot go and beat the ever-living shit out of this mutt and Birch thanks me. He has me meet him in his lab to get my Pokedex. He also lets me keep Hotshot as a starter Pokemon because I already named and befriended him. I told my mom I was once again aiming for the Elite Four and she wished me luck, despite wishing we could have spent more time together before I went on my next gym challenge. Though as a loving mother, she puts her own feelings aside and hands me my old running shoes from Kanto. I dash off into the wilderness and make my way to Petalburg. On my way there, I evolved Hotshot into Combuskin and catch a Zigzagoon and name him Ziggy. I partially did this because I I knew I'd need a monster that can learn cut later on. I try to enter the nearest gym, but Dad's being a minion won't let me kick his ass until I'm stronger, so I have to go to the next closest gym. I meet some researcher on my way who's being assaulted by a local aqua grunt. I beat his moist ass until he's finished, and the researcher thanks me. I enter Rustboro City and then enter the gym. I talk to Roxanne, and of course we begin our battle. She sends out her Aeron first, and of course I send out Hotshot. I use Double Kick to avoid its sturdy and kill it pretty easily. I do the same to her Nose Pass, who dies as easily, and then the same to her Geodude, who as usual, dies relatively fast. I then have earned the Stone Badge. After leaving, I get some goods for the Demon Corporation and give it to Mr. Stone, who he himself is president of the corporation. He also asks me to deliver the goods somewhere else for him, but he also tells me to get a letter to his son on the way. Of course I say yes, knowing who his son is from Legends. I then have an old man sail me across the region to Duford Town and decide that since I'm there, I might as well try to beat the gym. My battle against Brawly starts and he sends out his Metatite. I'm a little scared, but I use Aerial Ace to take it down instantly. He sends out his Machop and I once again use Aerial Ace to beat him down. I then lastly take out his Makahita with, could you guess, Aerial Ace, and then I I've earned the Knuckle Badge. Now that my team's max level was raised, I accessed my PC and accessed the Scyther I had caught in the Kanto Safari Zone. I caught Scyther for a very specific reason before leaving for Hoenn, but I'm sure you'll find out about that later. This may also be a great time to remind you to like and subscribe if you're enjoying everything so far. Just just a little reminder, you know, just 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 a suggestion. I also canonically got the sword because I also wanted to keep a part of Kanto with me as I traversed Hoenn. Sentimentality and all that, you know? I then annoyingly crawled through the nearby caves to deliver Stephen Stone a letter. He felt a bit bad I had to crawl through the cave, so he gives me a TM for his favorite move, Steel Wing. I think he's a bit weird for hanging out in a cave, but he's a bit easy on the eyes and a world-renowned ex-champion, so I let it slide. I then had the old man sail me to Slateport. I made my way all the way through and got to Mauville City. Then some poor kid's dad had me beat him at Pokemon to show that he's a failure and he isn't loved at home. I felt a bit bad about that, but then I healed my Pokemon and went into the gym. This gym is where things get a little interesting. Watson sent out his Manetric first and I sent out Hotshot. I switched to Ziggy as Watson uses Volt Switch. I did this to sack Ziggy so that I didn't have to face the Volt Switch myself after multiple tries and knowing how easy it is for it to kill my Pokemon. I sent out Hotshot again against his Magneton, and Hotshot used Flame Charge to get it to low health. His Magneton used Shockwave, which got about 25% of Hotshot's health removed, but Hotshot quickly used Flame Charge again and killed Magneton. Watson sent out his Voltorb, so I had Hotshot use Double Kick and get paralyzed in the process. The Voltorb self-destructs and Hotshot goes just below 50% health. All things considered, not terrible, but I still had to beat his Manetric. Manetric used Volt Switch again, and Scyther dipped below half health, but Luckily, it was only an Electric that came out. Scyther slashed the Electric to low health before getting paralyzed to Thunder Wave. I used a potion on a Hotshot as Electric kills Scyther with two Shockwaves. Hotshot uses Flame Charge against Electric and kills it. And now all that I need to do is have Hotshot kill Manetric and I get the badge. Luckily due to this, I can't use Volt Switch to switch out anymore and so it only uses it to deal damage. Hotshot Flame Charges it half to death and I 
use a max potion to restore Hotshot's health, as it takes another two volt switches before using Flame Charge to defeat Watson. So, now that we've got the Dynamo badge, we move on to the next town. Although I must say, I temporarily flew to Kanto to trade with my friend Cars to Evolve Scyther into Scyzor. Sadly, I had to level it up past the level cap, so I wouldn't be able to use it for the next gym. But, now that it's in the form I would like, I would like to introduce you to its name. Scyzor is now Ryuko. This is a reference to absolutely nothing. I also gave her Rock Smash so that she'd be useful without necessarily being in battle, and also because I wanted some more type diversity with her moves. Later on in my journey, I found myself having some trouble getting past some Team Magma Grunts, so I decided to buy a Pokemon to help me through, specifically a water type, because duh, it's in their name. And so I purchased a Sharpedo. I named Sharpedo Shade, and then we continued onward with our journey, after defeating that part of Team Magma anyway. And so me and my newly four Pokemon squad made our way to Leverage Town. Is it pronounced Leverage Town, by the way? I think it's that. I probably should have looked it up at some point. I've just been saying Leverage Town without knowing if it's the right name. Ha. Huh. But you know, a good way to let me know would be leaving a comment. After speaking to Gym Leader Flannery for a moment, I sent out Hotshot first, but switched her for Ryoko to get her death out of the way and to get a clean switch to Shade. I served her Torkoal to about 25% health, and she used Overheat to do the same to me. I used my speed advantage to take her Torkoal out with Surf, and she brought her camera up. I served it, and its HP was just above 50% before using Earth Power to defeat Shade. I brought out Trusty Hotshot again, who double kicked it to lower it at the very least. and then we had to face Slugma Balls. Hotshot used Bounce and defeated Slugma swiftly. Lastly, her Newell came out and Hotshot bounced it to death, claiming our Heat Badge. And so I made my way back to Petalburg City. I did this to see if Father finally thought I was strong enough to face him, and indeed he did. He hadn't been all too happy taking over the job for someone who was retiring, but he seemed ecstatic that he was able to have a real battle with his child, despite having to go easy on me, and, and use a team of Pokemon that, though they were his, he wasn't as familiar with. First he sent out his Slack, first he sent out his Slack, sent out his Slack, he 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 sent out Hotshot first, and Dad sent out his Persian. Persian used Fake Out to get an easy hit on Hotshot, and sadly, Hotshot wasn't able to attack because of fake out. Persian used facade and Hotshot used double kick and killed Persian. Next came out that Saw's Buck, which used Megahorn, and thankfully it missed, allowing me to have Hot Shot Flame Charge it to 5%. I sent out Ziggy for a clean switch, and it was killed by Saw's Buck's facade. So I switched in Ryuko and she used bullet punch to kill Saw's Buck. Dad pulled out his Braviary next and Ryuko bullet punched it twice to kill it. I then got the balance badge. Dad was both sad and happy that I managed to beat him, his own child, beating him in a Pokemon battle. Though he did tell me that if I wanted an interesting normal type as he'd used in his gym, then I should go check out the Weather Research Center. He said this area had an interesting normal type Pokemon, and so I went to investigate. Here I found a cast form, which I named Weather Report, both because of its power and a JoJo reference. Also, I don't really see a point in saying this at some point later, so I want to say that later in the video I got rid of the water moves and prioritized fire and ice, which technically makes it a dual reference, or I guess maybe a triple reference to both Weather Report from JoJo, Todoroki from My Hero, and possibly Earth, Wind, and Fire from JoJo as well. And I guess also the songs that those are in relation to, huh? That's up to five references in just one Pokemon. So after getting weather, I made my way to Fortree City for the next gym badge. Though I had some trouble getting into the gym, so I just went forward on my journey, not knowing what to do, and I had a chance encounter with Stephen Stone who decided to help me out. Since I explained my woes to the wonderful Stephen Stone who, on a side note, told me to stop calling him Stephen Stone because it was getting a little weird at this point. Anyway, he decided to help me out by telling me that this was because there was a Kecleon in my way. He gave me some tricks to finding and defeating that Kecleon, and then I made my way into the gym. I then made my way through the Fortree City gym and fought Winona. First, she sent out her Altaria, and I sent out Weather report. I had Weather use, shockingly, a Weather move, and then this changed the Weather to Hail. Weather was then killed by Altaria, and I had Shade come out to defeat the Dragon Pokemon that is Altaria with an Ice Fang. Luckily, during that turn, Altaria flinched, ensuring my success. Next, she sent out Skarmory, and I had Shade use Ice Fang again. It was take on my part, to be sure, which caused Shade to take some damage. Shade then used Surf, and nearly killed Skarmory, but the damage she took from Skarmory activated her Rough Skin, which ended up killing it anyway. Winona then sent out her Pelipper. Shade crunched it to half health before dying, and I then had Ziggy out, who fainted just about immediately, but I had Ryuko come out and use two wing attacks to kill it. Ryuko was at less than half health, but managed to take out the next Pokemon as well with three bullet punches. Lastly, Tropius came out, and I had Ryuko wing attack it before dying to an earthquake. Luckily, Hotshot had the type advantage here and used Blaze Cake to turn the prehistoric Pokemon into a fossil, and earn us the Feather Badge in the process. So, next in my journey, I went to Moss Deep City and challenged Tate and Liza. The two first sent out their Claydol and Solrock, to which I served with Shade and used Excessor on Claydol. Ryuko died to Solrock, and Shade was put to 50% by Claydol. Shade served again, and Hotshot was put to about 
25 health. I had Hotshot bounce to avoid the next surf and deal damage to the enemies. Shade surfed their Grumpig and Lunatone, and the two were weakened. Hotshot weakened Grumpig to near death, and I had Gust, my Pidgeotto I mentioned earlier, and added to my team so I both had a 16 member and someone to use Fly, and I guess to keep Kanto with me or something on my next journey. Die to the same surf that killed Lunatone. Ziggy, who had become a Leon by now, came out and together with Shade defeated Zatu. I then had Weather replace Shade after she died with the help of Ziggy, the two defeated Grumpig, and won us the Mind Badge. After some heavy weather and a talk with Steven, I went to face the Tsutopolis gym, and I faced Juan. He had his crowd on start, and Hotshot double caked it to near death and was put low by Waterfall before taking it out. Hotshot got some hits in on Kingdra before fainting, and I had Gus, now a Pidgeot, come out and twist her at half to death before dying. I then had Ryoko come out and try to use x Scissor to kill Kingdra, but before that could happen, Walrein came out and ruined my day. Ryoko kept using Rock Smash to kill it, and eventually did after a long effort. His cash was then sent out, and Ryoko used x Scissor twice to kill it, getting on low health herself. She then used x Scissor for the last time before getting water pulsed by Gorbis. Ziggy took out Gorbis and then dealt some damage to Kingra, both with Pin Missile, and then Weather Report came out and used Hail to change forms as a potion was used to restore Kingdra. Weather used Blizzard and got Kingdra to just above half health before dying as Shade finished the job with two crunches. And now that I had the Rain Badge, the final Badge of Hoenn, I could challenge both the Elite Four and then Champion Wallace. Cinny pulled up Mighty Anna first, and I sent her Hotshot. Hotshot used Double Kick, and then Mighty Anna used Swagger, which erased Hotshot's attack and confused it. Hotshot kicked it again, and it died. Next, Sydney sent out Crawdon, and Hotshot hurt itself like a bit of a dumbass, but then thankfully avoided Crawdon's Crab Hammer. Hotshot managed to Double Kick Crawdon, and then it died. Next, Shift Tree was sent out, and Hotshot Double Kicked it to death, and lastly, Hotshot killed Cacturn with a Double Kick. We then moved on to the next room. Phoebe sent out Sableye first, and Shade switched to Ziggy, who was toxically poisoned. Ziggy proceeded to use Thunderbolt, and Sableye used Foul Play. Ziggy used Pin Missile to hit five times before dying. Shade came back out and crunched Sableye before getting toxic. Shade crunched it to faint, and then Phoebe sent out Dusk Noir. Shade crunched it to below half health, and then was killed by Dusk Noir's Thunder Punch. Hotshot came out and Brave Birded it to death. Then Bennett came out and Hotshot once again used Brave Bird and got it near death. Hotshot used Blaze Kick to kill it before Dusk Lops came out. Once again, Hotshot used Brave Bird to get it below half health before dying allowing Ryuko to bullet punch it to half health once again. Weather Report came and Dusclops switched out to Bennett. The hail transformed Weather, making Blizzard stronger, and it got Bennett to half health. Gust came out and flew into Bennett, killing it. We did the same to Dusclops before I revived Shade, who killed the damn thing, and we continued to the next room. Alicia started with Frostlass, and I switched out Hotshot for Cast Form, who used Sunny Day to turn the weather hot and its form the same. Alas, it then died, but gave Hotshot enough power to nearly take out Frostlass. Then Shade switched, and his Frostlass switched out. Shade crunched Wall Rain to death, and then crunched Glalie to half health. Ziggy then came out and let Glalie explode him to death, and then Gus came out and flew to Frostlass into death, allowing Ryuko to finish the job. Ryuko then slayed Glalie as well, before using a full restore to ensure the death of Frostlass. We then again moved to the next room. And now for the last member of the Hoenn Elite Four, Drake. First he sent out Flygon, and I sent out Weather. Weather turned the Weather to hail before dying. Shade then came out and used Ice Fang to destroy Flygon, and then switch out for Ryuko, who died to Kingdra. Next, Hotshot came out and brave birded Kingdra before Kingdra switched out for Salamence. Salamence also got brave birded and Sky Arbor cutted before Hotshot died, and Ziggy switched in to allow Shade to return to life and Ice Fang to death. Shade was on low health, but crunched Kingdra to low HP before Gus switched in and allowed Shade to once again revive. Next, Shade killed Flygon and then Altari. And now, lastly, the champion Wallace. Champion Wallace, rumored equal to Steven Stone, was my next opponent. Wallace congratulated me for getting there, and told me to show my fullest skill before immediately jumping into battle. First he sent out his Milotic, and I sent Ziggy first, who used Thunderbolt until it died, which was one hit. Next out came Hotshot, who used Brave Bird to get it low. Milotic Hydro pumped Hotshot to death, and then I sent out Shade to crush Milotic. But Wallace switched in Gyarados, which still was good I got a lot of damage on, if Wallace didn't instantly heal it anyway. Another Crunch got it low again, and so did the rough skin from Gyarados killing Shade. Ryuko wing attacked Gyarados, and Ryuko tried to use it again, but it flinched and was brought to low health while also getting Gyarados to extremely low health, allowing Weather to come in and use Sunny Day. Weather then allowed me to max revive Hotshot and then Gyarados killed it. Hotshot then came in and brave birded Gyarados to death. The battle seemed to rage on forever, with repeated revives on my end, but I knew I couldn't give in and let Wallace win. After all my adventures, everything that had happened up to this point, I couldn't just let this wet man win. And so, Shade eventually crunched tentacles to death, and then Ryuko killed Wizcash with one final exit.
Wallace congratulated me on my victory, and then showed me to the champion room. I made my way back home, and my mother and father congratulated my victory. You may assume this is where this part of my journey ends, but I had one more thing I wanted to see. I had heard rumors of Steven training at Meteor Falls due to loving rock so much, and so I had to see if they were true. I entered the caves, went through the funnels, and found him there. He was shocked I was able to find him at first, and he seemed a bit embarrassed about being such a rock maniac, but soon I challenged him, and his mood changed. He accepted my battle request, his expression, stone. First he sent out his Skarmory. Hotshot came out and was instantly one-shot by Skarmory's Brave Bird. Not too much of a shock, I knew how powerful the move was, after all I'd used it to take out a many an opponent before myself. So I summoned Ziggy to use Thunderbolt. Steven then sent out his Metagross. I revived Hotshot as Metagross killed Ziggy, and I sent out Ryuko. Ryuko was swiftly killed by Metagross's Earthquake. Shade came out and was instantly killed by Earthquake. Hotshot came out and was instantly killed by Earthquake. Gus came out and wasn't killed by Earthquake, but was killed regardless. Weather came out and was killed by Earthquake. I stood there shocked for a moment. I'd always heard that, since Wallace had overcome Steven's strength as a champion, that they were equals in a way. Or at the very least, Wallace was stronger. And yet, I could beat Wallace and not Steven? I stood there flabbergasted. I even had the type advantage here when I didn't win fighting Wallace. I should have won this battle, and yet I didn't. Steven probably saw my sorry expression and took some pity on me. He laughed a bit as he came over to me, putting his hand on my shoulder. You're truly an amazing trainer, Eris. It's well known Wallace had overcome me before, and you expected that that would mean that you would beat me here. But I've grown a lot since then. I've been a trainer for so long, and though only part of that time was as champion, I am just as strong, if not stronger, than the champion I was before. So next time you come to face me, I expect you to be as strong as one as well. I didn't completely understand what he meant at first, but as I left the cave and started to make my way home, I think I understood. Just because I had beat the champion of Kanto and Hoenn, that doesn't mean I was truly worthy of being a champion. That didn't mean I had the power required to be one. I had strong bonds with my Pokemon, and that had already put me on the track to becoming nearly as strong as the champions, but there was something that I lacked that they somehow had. Something that made them not just another trainer, but a champion. Not just someone who could beat the champions, but someone who was a champion. And so... I contemplated this, and I made a decision. I put my team in the box, got out Red, and had Red fly me towards the boat. The boat of which that would transport me to the next region I would be going to. There was no more time for games. If I wanted to become the very best that no one ever was, I had to defeat every champion in the world. I wished Red goodbye for a second time, my first starter, looking him in the eyes, telling him I would see him again soon. And then, just like before, I turned my back and sailed towards a new region. And now that we've got that obligatory set of Pokemon theme moment, I guess it's time for me to do the review. Overall, better than Kanto. Um, the great majority anyway, although it still suffers from some of the same problems of, uh, the fact that I don't really like the, like, main antagonist sections where you fight the evil team. I still don't like those, I just want to fight the gyms and get it through. Although it had less of those, like, big, large mandatory sections that Kanto had. Almost all of Kanto's Team Rocket sections were massive, but a lot of this games were shorter and a bit more spaced out. Um, like for example, in, team, in like with Team Rocket, it would have been like an hour of some random bullshit to find the one thing, so you can actually do the other thing. And while in this game, it's like, all right, me and Steven, we're gonna we're gonna beat up some grunts together because we're so cool. Um, speaking of Steven, uh, I don't know if I got to cross in the script. I really liked Steven. I did not like Lance, uh, not only because he was a hard bastard, but because he was he lacked like an interesting personality. And even though Wallace was the technical champion of Hoenn, I liked him vicariously through Steven in a way. Like, since him and Steven were friends and I respected Steven, I respected Wallace more. Wallace also wasn't as hard as Lance, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I didn't do some stupid stuff like, I don't know, go, go into the fight with, against the dragon champion with ha having forgot to leave Ice Beam on my Lapras, because I am an idiot. But yeah, generally, um, in fact, I like Steven enough to canonically lose to him. Also because I didn't want to spend another month working on this video, but also I will eventually in this series fight Steven again, uh, but I have a special plan for that and it'll be one of the last things in the series. All that said though, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, I feel like some of the gyms were a lot more, like, I mean, they were both fairer and, like, more e like, they were more, like, the challenges weren't easier, per se. The puzzles were better, though, I will say that, um, but, like, the gyms weren't easier, per se. They were more so just 
more enjoyable, I guess. They felt more fair. While a lot of the stuff in Kanto felt like it was hard for the sake of being annoying, a lot of this stuff was like, okay, that, that's a reasonable difficulty for the point I am in the game. I've also thought about maybe making a lore video to, like, explain why certain things are the way they are in the series, because, dear lord, I've changed so many rules of Pokemon. I mean, I inferred that, like, in this video, by beating the champion, you don't become the champion, uh, which is very different from Pokemon. Part of that's because it's in PokeMMO, and so, you know, I want to, I, I've been thinking about making a video like that after this one. It'll definitely be a lot shorter, and it'll just be me explaining some stuff, but yeah, um, the next one won't come out for a while. I mean, you got, at the point I'm recording all of this, it's been three months since I released the Red video, and technically also three months since I started this, uh, well, started playing Hoenn anyway, which is a stark contrast from the seven months it took me to be Kanto, but, um, so the next one probably won't come out for a while. It's been three months now, so that means it'll have been five months by the time, um, this video officially releases in December. So, yeah, don't expect this for, like, another five to seven months. Uh, well, not this video, but, you know, the next one, Diamond and Pearl. Probably Diamond and Pearl. Most definitely Diamond and Pearl, though. But, yeah, uh, anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, I would say that this game is, like, slightly above Kanto. I did like a lot about Kanto, uh, but also a lot of fun when I liked. Also, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Like, there's a lot of weird things, especially in the start. Later on, they're, like, very different, but early on, they feel fairly similar. Um, and the main difference later on is the fact of the amount of water. I had heard the memes. I didn't think it was that bad. It's so annoying. I used so many repels. Like, I nearly bought repels to, like, deal with the water. It's so bad. Um, and also, the HM thing is a lot worse in this one. There were a lot more, like, moves that were mandatory. And by that, I mean, like, just dive, really. But regardless, uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Please, like, comment, subscribe, follow my Twitter if you want. Um, but all around, just, like, yeah, share this around. If you really enjoyed this and you haven't seen the first one, go watch the first one. I can promise you it'll be enjoyable. This video, like, like the games, is slightly better. I'm a bit more skilled now. That first video really tested my skills, and I feel like this one is going to be an even better test of my skills. Uh, just for video script writing, it was, like, a massive improvement. Visuals are probably going to be a bit of an improvement as well. But, yeah, um, I, I really just really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, like my comment, uh, share it around, and I will see you in the next video, whether you watch that or not, or you just watch the next Pokemon MO video, but prefer you watch my next video. I'm releasing, in fact, I might as well mention this, I'm releasing extra videos this December, so watch those, please. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this, uh, like, literally thank you, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share it around, hit the bell, bye-bye! Like and subscribe!